What up, everybody? So today, we are in ARC Survival Evolved, but it's not a normal ARC video. Today, I'm going to be giving you the my 10 favorite dinosaurs, so hope you all enjoy, and these dinos are not in any particular order, so let's get into it. And thank, real quick, thank you all for your support and watching the video. Alright, let's just get straight into it. Starting with Gnome, the first creature I determined as my favorite, the Reaper. Overall, they look cool. They're a gigantic, scary abomination with one of the best sounds of a roar possible. But in terms of creature, they are amazing. They have a very, very good jump, for one. Their health pool is ridiculous when leveled up properly and everything. This is just a spawned in tamed one, but it's good. It's a very good creature overall. I already said that. What am I doing? Um, anyway, they have great health, uh, incredible resistance. Like, It's like an 80% resistance unless someone has a light pet, so it's amazing. They are on par with well-bred Rexes for damage. And their agility overall is just it's unstoppable. And on top of that, if you want to hide them with some secret stuff, you can bury them. So there you go. That is why these guys are on the list of 10 of my most favorite arc creatures. Oh, look at them big pearly whites. Alright, so coming in on the second on the list is just a classic favorite creature of mine, who I have outsetted with his very special saddle, is a T-Rex. So, overall, these guys are a staple of any dinosaur game and a little bit biased because the T-Rex is the single my single most favorite creature. And overall, is still one of my favorite creatures, even in this game. Because overall, endgame, they are so crucial. Always have been, and will always be a base element in this game, and a very important one. So, overall, good health pool. Good damage, not great for mobility, but it's not really what they're meant for all the time. But, yeah. Um, on top of that, they have very good breeding potential. Um, on top of that, the eggs make exceptional kibble. I think it's exceptional. I, I, but anyway, there's not much to say. It's just these guys look cool. They're ma They're uh, what is it? Amazing to do. And let's let's not even forget their tech saddle, which turns into a cannon. Like, end game, you get a Rex that can shoot lasers. Like, what's not to love? It's a T Rex with lasers. So. T-Rex, coming in at the second All spot. Alright, so the third creature we will be showing today are the Argentavis. Do I have a saddle for this? Oh wait, because I use commands, I can just ride this thing. But, the Argentavis has gone through many game chain designs. When I played this game early on when it was like still a beta, I thought its design looked good. Then they revamped it to make it basically a giant bird eagle, or basically... A giant majestic eagle. Its design is beautiful. Its functionality is amazing. Being able to pick up... All right, a turtle's too big, but... Being able to pick up... Uh, was it creatures? Two small creatures, like so. One in the beak, one in the... One in the... Um, uh, mouth. Which is very good if you have a bunch of small creatures. But in the inventory... Uh, it will have reduced weight on certain materials. Like stone, metal... And overall, they are good co aerial combats because they have a nice health pool, um, good stamina, and a very good weight. And these things are easily breedable. And their colors can be very beautiful. This is just a basic orange and, like, black, but still, nonetheless. Overall, basic design and use uh, usefulness is why I love these creatures. And it was also the first flyer I saw in this game. And as soon as my friend showed it to me, I became attached to it. And I wanted once ever since I started playing the game. So yeah, the third spot on the top 10 is the RG. So coming in at number four, you know what, I should probably hide the HUD. But coming in at number four, we have the Lightning Wyvern. Now, I could have just said Wyverns, but specifically it's the Lightning Wyvern. Overall, the Lightning Wyvern isn't my favorite appearance wise but in terms of his breath it's an it's my favorite i love the beam how good it is how strong it is accurate 
But overall, and the sound. Let's not forget the sound. The sound of that lightning. Oh, it's just amazing. But wyverns overall are just... Let's see here. They are fast. They are strong. They are tanky. They don't have a saddle, which is a bit of a downfall, but they are worth it. It is worth it. For the amount of damage, weight, and uh, transport you can give these things, as well as travel speed, it's just amazing. There's a reason these are some of the most sought-after dinos in this game. And who can be... Like, let's be honest, it's a dragon. Who can hate it? Who can hate a dragon? If you hate dragons, I don't think I can call you a human being, to be honest. Alright, coming in in the f uh, fourth, no, fifth slot now, is the original big bad of the game. The boss, the like first real challenge most people will come across in this game, is the Giga. See, when I first played through this, I thought this creature would be like everything else once you tamed it. Like, oh, it's going to be far stronger than it was in the wild. You can just go out and kill everything now. Like, it'll be the a top apex predator. Nothing can stand up to it. Lo and behold, I was wrong. The first thing I did when I challenged these things is, one, go tame a wild, uh, go challenge a wild one. Did not go well. But, but, they are still strong nonetheless. And even stronger when you breed them. Their base stats don't change much, but leveling only in melee is probably the best thing. But the damage these things do is just uncompared. Like, in terms of, what is it? PvP, which I don't do much of, but I'll still mention, these things are top tier. The amount of, like, structures they can destroy just, or damage overall, structure dealt up to stone, it's just, like, nothing can compare to the fear of a gear, like, like, here. Wait, what would you do if you hear that? You would run in terror, because you should be. It's the Giga. It's known for being the biggest terror in the world, on the, sir, uh, on the, on the arcs. So yeah, the Giga, overall, its sound, its fear, and its strength is why it's become one of my favorites. Alright, so coming in at number 6, we have the Giga's newest cousin, the Cardon Car Cardontosaurus. I've always struggled to say a name my friend makes fun of me for it, but these things look amazing. These things, design-wise, are amazing. Oh, I got a sneak peek of what was coming up, but oh well, probably get cut. But overall... The design of these things are amazing, but what I love most about these things, despite not overall uh, being the most damage dealing compared to a Giga, the best thing is their versatility. One, they are faster. Two, um, they are more survivable. Basically, overall, these things are very similar to a Giga's, but they have less damage but more versatility. Being able to go on rampages nonstop, and uh, just kill nonstop and heal. And these things are best for ODST for, you know, uh, just the best loot in the game. So, yeah. It quickly became one of my favorites as soon as it came into the game. Because overall, appearance-wise, it's like a, a slightly better Rex. And the saddle is just far better because it's much more than a basic primitive saddle. It has more attention to detail in it. Almost remnant of Arc 2 saddles from the trailers, but... Yeah, the car is just a far more versatile dino compared to the Giga, and I just love it for that. It's like the Giga, but better in some ways. Not every way, but some. Now to the number seven spot. Get out of here, Overraptor. Uh-oh, I hit the Rock Drake. But uh, here's our number seven spot, the uh, Rock Drake. So, overall, uh, you see the Tech Saddle? It's like, we have it on here just like the Rock Drake. Uh, yeah. Like the Rex, but it just has another cool factor to them. But overall, these things are amazing. Their use fertility and terrain is just uncompared. Especially in Aberration. But being able to glide, jump attack, go invisible. Just soar through the air. Climb on anything. And just look cool as anything, as anything ever does. It's just adds to why I'm one of my favorites. And they are the main damage dealer, or basically meant to replace, uh, was it, Rex's on um, Aberration. So yeah, there's not much to say. The tech saddle allows for two passengers, though, 
which is nice if you want to get your friends along for a journey. But the Rock Drakes are just a simple, very versatile creature, strong in combat, and just looking cool. And if you know anything about Star Wars, you know Obi-Wan rise, rises fucker. And everyone loves Obi-Wan, so you gotta love the Rock Drake. Alright, coming in the ace slot, we have the Featherlight. Now, these creatures, their usefulness is, um, as any lantern pit, is to provide light and um, an aberration in the hazard zones to keep you safe. And they also allow you to debuff Reapers. But the reason why these guys are my favorite out of all the lantern pets and one of the top tens is just how pretty they look as a bird. Their most exotic colors just has always been breathtaking to me. So simply put, the colors and the adorable look of these birds is just what put them in my favorites. Nothing too special. Uh, particular about them but yeah just the simple appearance is why they're one of my favorites all right coming in at the number nine slot we have the shadow main now the shadow main is one of gen 2's newest creatures now they have always been very very good and strong for meta being able to uh, be very good damage dealers very fast mobility and have incredible like armor resistance and whatnot allows them to basically become basically they most people try to replace them instead of rexes for boss fights but I, I don't go through the hassle because they still are a bit of a pain to tame compared to say a rex but once you get a good pair of them and breed them out they're the most formidable group of creatures you could probably have but Simply put, they look good, they have very overall stats, their unique abilities include, which I can't display all of them because I need more, and I don't feel like summoning more, but like the Rock Drake, they can also go invisible. Why am I, get me out, oh, there we go, I was saying the wrong button, but they go invisible, they leave a trail behind, but they do also, and move slow, but it's quite a nice invisibility. It's not the best, but... It's nice if you want to get this if you want to slowly sneak a lot sneak up on someone without making a lot of noise a shadow me is a good way to do it and not to mention they get a hydration buff like a spino where you run in water you get more damage you move faster uh, here, let's see the exact uh, let's see here hydration buff which is health regen damage and speed are boosted so yeah those are some of the best things about it and let's not forget a very well let's i almost forgot to mention their special dash attack to many creatures and i don't have creatures in my render all right so anything in that render they jump to and if there's multiple targets they hit it but it stuns and dismounts everything that is in it so with their unique abilities their beautiful colors and overall appearance as well as just usefulness are another reason why they're in my top 10 so the number 10 spot we have here is the Ice Titan. Now, you probably saw a glimpse of him because he's so massive, it's hard to hide him, but it, it's an Ice Titan. It, one, who doesn't like a giant monster they can control? But the reason why I prefer him to any other of the Titans is his pure mobility. Like, oh, that was not an example because he was stuck in the ground, but... Like, look at this thing. This giant... Imagine just being leapt on by a literal giant ice creature. What? What? What's not to love? But, simply put, this thing is by far the best Titan, mobility-wise and sound and design-wise for me. He actually looks like a ferocious beast. And it looks like a giant bear that's been mutated, to be honest, to me. Giant bear rhinoceros thing, but... It, oh, his design is amazing. His sound is amazing. His overall usefulness is amazing. And simply put, I just fell in love with this creature as soon as I saw him. And I've all I've wanted to tame one for a while, and I did. Took a while with me and my friend's help, but we got one. So as soon as I got it, I basically played it with it nonstop until I got off for the day. But all right, so let's take a look at some of his abilities. Why do I? Why don't I? All right, so. We've seen this jump. He has some basic attacks like a ground slam, 
foot slam. Uh, let's see here. He has an ice breath. And uh, he shoots a glob of snow, which freezes things upon impact. Does a fair bit of damage. There's the ice breath. But it'll freeze anything directly below him. Which allows you to just smash upon it and on. And we feel there's a dip low over there, which is quite far, actually. So, this dude's attacks are very useful. So, that is why I love him. He's, oh my gosh, the damage. I forgot how strong these things are. But overall, the damage this, these guys pull is just amazing. Uncompared. And the mobility of this Titan is just one of the reasons I love him. So yeah, those are my 10 most favorite dinosaurs in no particular order in ARC. So hope you all enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video.